Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back. We want to go to the second part of our assets and bases topic, which is very important. The last time when we spoke, we ended up with uh, conjugate asset base pairs. And now I wanted to start off on the classification of assets. All right. So how are assets classified? Well, assets are classified as either monoprotic assets or diprotic assets. All right. Monoprotic assets are those type of assets which give out one proton per molecule of the asset. So if it gives out one mono, mono, one proton. So if it gives out one proton, a molecule of acid that is known as a monoprotic acid. If it's diprotic, it's a type of acid that gives out two protons per molecule of acid. Now, you know, it's not enough to just to talk. We need to show examples. We need to write down what we need to understand about monoprotic acids as well as diprotic protic acids. All right. To begin with, here's a simple example. The best example of a monoprotic acid is hydrochloric acid, HCl. Why is it called a monoprotic acid? Because when it is in solution, it only gives out one proton per molecule of the acid. Actually, it gives out what it has. And so you classify acids as um, classify acids according to the number of protons that it is able to give out. So if it's got one proton, like HCl, it's monoprotic. Sulfuric acid, whose formula is H2SO4, sulfuric acid, it is able to give out two protons per molecule of acid, right? It's able to give out two protons per molecule of acid. There you go. So this one becomes diprotic. It's important to know the monoprotic as well as the diprotic uh, uh, acids. You can also go further and find other uh, versions of it, but monoprotic and diprotic for our level would suffice. Now, going further on with acids and bases, we must be able to know strong acids as well as strong bases. Be able to come up with examples as well as to define a strong acid as well as a strong base. Let's start off with a strong acid. So how do we define a strong acid? This is a substance that when it is in solution, it completely ionizes or completely dissociates to form a high concentration of hydronium ions. Okay, let's just get this clear. So a strong acid is a substance that completely ionizes or dissociates in solution to form a high concentration of hydronium ions. We need to understand this. So hydrochloric acid, and I know it's a very popular one that I've been using quite a lot, is a strong acid. Why? Because when it is in solution, when it is in water, it gives out or completely ionizes to form the hydronium ions. I can put H plus if I want to, and I can put here or H3 or plus ions here, as well as the chloride ion. Remember I said to you earlier on that these ones can be used interchangeably. Strong acids, therefore, are acids that when in solution, they completely ionize or completely dissociate to give a high concentration of hydronium ions, or you can say a high concentration of the hydrogen ion as well. Strong acids. I've got a couple of examples of strong acids, and I want you to be able to see that here. I put that nicely in your notes so that you can be able to notice um, and understand quite clearly. All right, let me just share the screen, show you the notes as you need to know and always remember what is important right here. So there you are, examples of strong acids include hydrochloric acid, talked about that, sulfuric acid, diprotic, nitric acid as well. Those are simple examples of strong acids as well as strong, um, strong acids. Now let's go to strong bases, which is what I wanted to talk about. Right, a strong base is a substance that ionizes 
completely in water or in solution to form a high concentration of the hydroxide ions. So if it's a base and is strong, in solution comple completely or fully ionizes to form a high concentration of hydroxide ions. As you can see, I put a definition for you there. Then I said examples include sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, um, as well as other strong hydroxides or strong bases that we have. But these ones would suffice right here. So it looks like if I was to talk about now weak acids and weak bases, it would be the opposite of what a strong acid is and what a strong base is. Now, weak acids or weak bases, let me start off with weak acids. These are substances that partially, not fully, partly, incompletely dissociate or ionize in solution. And therefore, they form a low concentration of the hydronium ions or the H plus ions. So a typical weak acid is partly ionized in solution, forming a low concentration of the hydronium ions. Ethanoic acid, oxalic acid, these are some examples of weak acids that you have. Weak base, let's go. So a weak base is a substance that dissociates or ionizes incompletely in solution to form a low concentration of hydroxide ions. So that's a weak base right there, low concentration of hydroxide ions. Let me see the simple, simple examples of weak bases. It's in your notes right there. It's ammonia, it's sodium carbonate, it's potassium carbonate, it's calcium carbonate. These are examples of weak bases as well as weak acids as I put it across. Now, one thing that we should understand, and I just want to make sure that I go to my whiteboard here, is that the strength of an acid can be qualitatively, right? Quantitative, quantitatively uh, given off by what is known as the Ka and Kb values. So the Ka is the acid dissociation constant. The Kb is the base dissociation constant. These are numbers that represent the fraction of the acid that dissociated, Ka. The fraction of the base that dissociated, Kb. And the Ka and Kb values indicate the strength of the acid. So the Ka, K, Kb values indicate the strength of the acid or the strength of the base. So Ka is specifically for acids while Kb is specifically for bases. A high Ka is greater than one. A low one is less than one. A high Kb greater than one, a low one is less than one. Strong acids have high Ka values. Strong bases have high Kb values. And therefore weak acids, low Ka, as well as weak bases, low Kb. So these particular values indicate the strength of your acid or your base. Let's quickly run to uh, talking about uh, dilute and concentrated solutions. I want us to understand that a dilute solution is everything to do, or a concentrated solution is everything to do with the competition between the amount of your solvent to the amount of your solute. All right, what am I talking about here? If you say a substance is concentrated, you are referring to the fact that in that particular substance, there is more of itself than there is of water. There's more of the substance than there is of water. If it's dilute, that means that there is more water than the substance itself. And that's very important. Now, one misdemeanor that happens is this, and I just wanna make sure that it's cleared up in terms of chemistry. So a concentrated substance is a substance that contains uh, a greater number of moles of itself than water or in proportion to the volume of water. And a dilute one is one that contains more water 
in proportion to the substance itself. Now, it gets tricky when you're in the kitchen. And let me just illustrate this nicely so that you can see what I'm talking about. I want to share this one. And I got my glass here. And it's got my juice right there. All right. So this is concentrated. Why do I say that? It's because there's more of the juice itself than there is of water. It's very concentrated. Right. And then if I want to dilute it, if I want to make it dilute, all I need to do is add more water than the juice itself. The misconception in the kitchen starts off this way. And I'm drinking. Mmm. Mmm. Then I say to myself, oof, it is strong. It is strong. Right there, I've made a fundamental chemistry error. It is not strong. Because a strong substance is one that completely ionizes in solution. This is not strong. This is concentrated. So there is no relationship between strength as well as concentration. So do not think that just because a substance is concentrated, it necessarily means that it is strong. In that case, when you say, mm, it is strong, it is not strong, you're supposed to say it's concentrated. Now, let's dilute this and see if this illustration works again. Here's my water, here's my substance. When I'm diluting, I put more water than the substance itself. So watch this out now. All right, there we go, there we go. I'm pouring it right there. All right, there we go. And then I'm gonna drink this. Ah, now, it is weak. Again, a fundamental chemistry error. It is not weak. It is dilute, why? Because there is more water than actually the substance itself. So this must be cleared up nicely as we go on along in all the questions that definitely if it is dilute, it means that there's a proportion of the solvent being smaller than the, the solvent being greater than the actual uh, solute. That is if it's dilute. By solvent, I mean the water and by solute, I mean the actual substance itself. So if it's concentrated, it basically means that in that case, it's a case where there is less solvent, but more solute in that particular thing. It will help us to be able to understand this by reading and checking our very important notes, which I write for you, so that you can be able to understand this further and further. All right, there we go. And so what is a concentrated substance? A concentrated substance is one that contains a large amount, number of moles of acid or base in proportion to the volume of water. That's constant. Treated. And if it's dilute, a dilute acid or base is one that contains a small amount of acid or base in proportion to the volume of water. So just to end it up nicely here, please remember that a, there is no necessary relationship between the fact that if it's dilute, is it weak? Not true. I can have a very, very strong dilute acid. And there's no relationship to say if it's concentrated, it is very strong. No, 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 no. That does not work. So I want you guys to always remember that and be clear about that. No more making the mistake in the kitchen. Now we know what we need to know. I'll catch you guys on the next part of part three of Artisan Bases. See you soon.